Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I wanted to do a flip through with you today and just show you another quick little project I've been working on. Um, I would say last summer, summer of 2019, I was getting back into my journaling things, my junk journals, my traveler's notebooks a little bit more. I'd kind of been straying off into other stuff and was wanting to get back with that and I started following um, numerous YouTubers but the first place I saw this was Sarah Martinez. Um, she had this Moleskine Expanded and I really liked the size of it. She was using it as a journal um, for all sorts of things I believe and I liked the size. I liked that you can put this elastic strap around it, joins in on the back. I also really like the more flexible cover that really appealed to me. And the size I enjoy using because, I don't know, it's a little wider than like a traveler's notebook standard, but it still seems like a real easy thing to grab and go. I don't know, it just doesn't feel too big and too bulky. I did have a little stamp, wax stamp of a bumblebee to go with my little bee sticker that fell off and so I just kind of cleaned it up. Anyway, this came at a really good time. I, like I said, I wanted to start journaling. I like the idea of a bigger thing to contain a lot of thoughts and information and this has worked well, but it's almost been a year and no gripes against the book. I'm just getting restless. I have maybe that many more pages. I think it has about 400 something pages. I have a few left and I am having a hard time using it up because I want to move on to something else. But I do feel like because it's bulking out a little, I mean I could press it together, it's not too bad. But I just have lost um, the desire to continue journaling in it and I think that's because I have started other things and I'm ready to move on to something different which is kind of how I am with things. I liked that this was expanded. I liked that it had a lot of extra space compared to the normal size one, but um, I feel like I strayed away from my original purpose in having this book. It kind of turned into a little bit of a smash book. As you can see here, I was adding letters and thank you cards that I received from some of my older kids, packaging labels, which I love. I should have put this in my other smash book, but at the time I didn't have another one going. I had to make a new one. And so it sort of turned into a little bit more, as you can see, of a kind of a scrapbooky style. And it's not really what I bought it for to begin with. And so I feel like it kind of has morphed into it doesn't have any rhyme or reason. And that's when I <clears throat> a little bit get restless with using something. I did try to date the outside. So it started in July 2019 and I wrapped it up in, see, it's just a mess. It was, it was okay before that, um, April of 2020. So almost a year, but I, I think I am going to put it on the shelf. Um, but I wanted to show you a little bit of what I was doing at the beginning. So my best friend died last July and um, I really wanted to just commemorate a lot of memories of her. I wanted to keep them fresh in my mind. An older friend of mine that I've known since I was three, um, this lady is in her 80s now, but she said write down everything you can, everything you remember of her. That's a real gift to have that. So I wrote and I wrote and then I I wrote poems to her, poems about her. I wrote names of my friends practicing my writing. So this was kind of a creative outlet journal. Names of my kids and my grandkids. Practice some fun, funky lettering I found on, probably on Pinterest. <clears throat> um, different quotes I've liked. A lot of it was about her, but also other things. I do a little camp with my kid, grandkids each summer, which basically is like five days 
one day a week for five weeks. And we have different themes. This year we had octopus owls, crocodiles and alligators, ninjas, and space and moon themed things. So I kind of wrote down a little bit there just to remember our camp themes, partly so I don't keep doing the same camps. I was wanting to learn how to do feathers. This is kind of funny. So this one turned out well. This turned out pretty good. This starts to look like a campfire that's purple. And then they started looking like different color Christmas trees. But as long as I had the guide or whatever, this was from How to Draw Feather on YouTube by Art Pro. That was fun. Anyway, experimented a little bit here with some watercolors and drawing flowers and bees. A random acts of kindness remembered. Um, there, there's my colorful Christmas trees, AKA feathers. I was kind of into experimenting with um, watercolor. I love the look of that. I haven't been able to achieve quite what I'm seeing others doing. And I like the idea of comparing the dry watercolor pencils with the water added. So that was kind of that, just for fun. I don't really keep swatches or anything because I I'm not a professional artist. I just enjoy goofing around with different things here and there. Like sunflowers here I was playing around with painting. Um, words to songs. Uh, song lyrics are often really meaningful to me. Really uh, feel like I can identify with them sometimes. Like, oh, that was written just for me. So I wrote down the words to Lauren Daigle's song, I Remember. I've always been into words and poetry and quotes and feel like they can oftentimes really resonate and express what I'm feeling. So that's why I wrote that down. And then, I, of course, I love a cup of hot chai or hot coffee and thought it would be fun to do some mugs. Again, just dabbling. Some people that I was following. Um, then I wrote, or am following, this is a tab. It says ants. Now, that's how we say it in the Midwest. Ants should be aunt or something like that if you're more northern or European. You say it properly. We say ant, and it sounds funny. I know my dad would always say it's supposed to be aunt. Anyway, so I wrote about my ants. Most of them are, well, I wouldn't say most, probably a mix of my great aunts and my mom's sisters who were always very much loved. I, I loved all of them. Uh, they're all gone now. Um, my great aunts were in their 80s and 90s and my grandma when they died and my regular aunts have since passed on as well. I, I miss them. They all contributed something special to my life so I wanted to commemorate them. The reason I wanted to do that was partly it helped me um, just recall things that were kind of way back in the brain files and partly was because I want to leave a memory of them to my kids. I think that at some point they'll be interested in knowing about the people that were important to me. Right now they don't really think to ask and because most of these people died before they were able to know them it's like they never existed and here and there I'll say oh your aunt Helen used to do blah 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 I think they think that's cool, but I don't think it means a whole lot to them. But I do believe that it will someday because that's where I'm at. I wonder about the childhood of my parents and even my aunts. And I would love to say, what was it like, you know, going to school, you know, during the war or taking the uh, streetcar to, to school or to work or, you know, all that history that's tied to these people their personal history as well as what was going on the world around, I, I cannot ask them anymore. So I say that so if my kids want to know a little bit more about what was going on in my world when I was growing up or what I'm even thinking about now, they can have all these books when I'm gone. And if they get older, well, I hope they'll get older, but as they get older and they start to ask questions, then I can say, hey, all that stuff might be in these books. Um, so again, another poem that my friend Kathy wrote, other quotes. 
this was the week that she died and I, that may sound morbid but it was so much going on it was almost comical in a way because I had to get a dress I got the dress I had to take back the dress it didn't fit so the day of her service I'm finding a dress at the store and meanwhile I had to have some medical procedures done like the day of her um her uh, funeral and so I don't know and then we went out with friends I just wanted to remember that week, but I never ended up <clears throat> writing it in. But it was sad, and it had its funny elements, too. Some more poems. Here I am goofing around with mugs again. I guess that's an obsession. At first, I was kind of neat with this. I outlined the pages. I numbered the pages. I did the, the number stencils. Tried to keep with some themes. I don't even know. Oh, it says numb. That's how I was feeling right then. I like to add um, pictures of birds or things from our state nature magazine. We have a Missouri conservationist. Oftentimes I'll find neat pictures there. Then I started talking about the leathers I had back in the day when I had, what is it, five? I won't even try to count what I've done with that since. This is some highlights from a Bible study, like one of those online things where you meet with people, but the teacher is on video. I tried to highlight the main points of that study, so I didn't want to hang on to the book. I'm trying to get rid of things um, as my kids get older, and we're thinking that we might want to downsize our house in three or four years or so, so I'm not trying to keep everything that's good. So I thought it might be good to just commemorate some main points in this book. Anyway, more lettering. This one was really fun. Um, got this from Pinterest. Whitstock Vector? I don't know. Maybe that's the name of the type of print. But it was just real like flowy and you just add a color to it. I thought it looked really cool. So... A lot of journaling, a lot of random thoughts. These were all random thoughts of my friend. And this is really kind of why I started the book. But I did allow myself to put other, other things in there because I would not have probably filled the book. Um, more quotes, house colors, trying to use some of my other pens. I, I tend to just do black. And then here's miscellaneous family facts. So I have stuff about my grandma and grandpa who emigrated I think is what you say when they're coming into the country they came from Germany um, their story a little bit about my dad and his military career um, more attempts at feathers like I said they look like Christmas trees so and then here I was trying to mess around with learning some more kind of that calligraphy or fake, fake callig faux calligraphy, different TV or book romances, all for the point of practicing some lettering. My goofy feathers here. Blah, blah, blah. Lots of washi tape. Things that seem cozy to me. Another song. You probably don't want to see all this. That, I thought, turned out kind of cool. I love fall and the pumpkins. Anyway, quite a bit of journaling. <clears throat> Here, let's get into some more of the lighthearted stuff. So I was trying my paints out here, and one of the people I follow on YouTube, um, Scribbling Grace, I think is her name, her handle or whatever, did this fruit. And so I tried to use her method to do the citrus and the berries. More quotes, more song lyrics. So another Courtney Diaz, I think is her name. Uh, I was watching one of her YouTube videos and she said, have fun with being crazy, making little monsters, something that doesn't have to be um, look a certain way. Just let your creative juices flow. So I made these guys. I think I like him the best. More feathers. More pumpkins. I had fun trying to do 
weird looking creature girls. I don't even know what to call them. I use Neo Colors and black markers mostly for that. So sometimes that's fun when you're not trying to look like a certain thing. And then here I wrote a poem about my husband and his friend who is the husband of the friend who passed away. So they like to go fishing. So I did a little poem here. Here's their limerick. Two longtime friends, both named Ken, love to go fish these good men, setting out in a boat. All day they will float and rise to do it again. So there, that's my version of a trout. Words I didn't know. Again. Oh, and then my son, Drew, my youngest, who's 14, wrote the words to a song that we like. It's a, a, a worship song, a, a hymn. I wanted to get his handwriting in there. He's got some really awesome writing. He always did, even when he was first learning to do numbers. I was like, I love how this guy writes. If he went to uh, public school, the math teachers would love him because he does his numbers very neatly. And he will have math class away next year. Uh, when they get to about high school or late junior high, I start having him take uh, co-op classes. Words again to another song called Be Still My Soul. And then sometimes I would just stick in like random things like washi that I was enjoying at the moment or here's a little thank you sticker from I think a package, something I ordered, peel off sticker from some food product, um, banana stickers, and then this was from a candle, chestnut macchiato. That sounds really good right now. My son Sam went to Ireland for a study abroad semester program. Had to come back early because of the, the pandemic, the virus. Um, but I took the screenshot of a map that he sent us so we knew where his county was compared to the other Irish counties that were close by. And so we could kind of see where he was going on his field trips and stuff. And then this is a little letter from my friend, which I happened upon. I was cleaning out a drawer and... I saw the back of it first, and I thought, oh, a little sticker, cute. I'll put that in my uh, junk journal, in my smash book. And then I turned it over, and it was like a little thank you note she had written me for, I think, a Christmas present or something. So that was just like such a another treasure to find something she had written to me that I still had. Here I did my junk journal, or my, not junk journal, my traveler's notebook covers. The different colors they are in the style of journals I guess I was using at the time. And there was one here listed that I wanted to sell. Never could get anybody to uh, show any interest, so I just decided to end up using it. Um, homemade journals that I was using. A quote from Queen Elizabeth. I've been reading, or had been reading, a big biography on her and came across this. And I thought it was really cool. I really admire her. Um, one reason being is she, at a very young age, she became queen and took on the duty of that role very seriously. And her whole life, really, she has sought to fulfill that role and what it means to her country as, as best she could, putting aside even personal things to, in order to serve the country. And, you know, not a lot of people are willing to be so selfless. So I really ad admire her for that. Um, these are some product stickers, again, just some place to put them. And I like, I like looking at different things, more washi, some more quotes, more lettering. I I'm really interested in Sweden. I have a friend there. And I follow Maria from My Northern Heart, who's from Sweden. So I was taking some notes on some things she told us about Swedish fika, which is like their, sort of like their coffee break, but a little bit more to it than that. More stickers, more product things, labels from friends. I always like the yellow labels at the store. It means it's cheaper. Packaging. Um, well, that was just some cough drops I ordered, but... Anyway, and then I like the um, stuff from Ikea. So I cut out the labels there. Try not to show address labels because people tell me not to do that, and there I'm doing it. Okay, 
more from Sweden, some thank you notes, some uh, grawly leather. They always put in their, in your purchase or your request for leather samples, they always put in a little note and remind you what the things are and are really friendly in that way, very personable. So there's a label from a package I ordered from them. And then we're involved with Operation Christmas Child as on the prayer team, the local year-round volunteers. And this was something that we got when we received. Well, we received a pen for completing the training course. So I just stuck that in there. Some of my favorite washi. Just doodling. I like to doodle. I can sit and listen to people talk for a long time if I'm doodling and I like listening to people but I get restless so if I'm doing a sermon listening to a sermon or maybe whatever setting I, if I'm doodling I'm good so that's what that is and then this was something that Queen Elizabeth said when the trade towers were attacked in 9-11 and she gave a speech I don't remember the location um and I can't even tell what I wrote there. I don't know what that word is. Something speech. But she said, grief is the price we pay for love. My lettering is hideous there. I can't use those big pens and make it look neat. It looks like a five-year-old did it. But I love that quote. And isn't that true? I mean, if we choose to love, we are going to experience grief at some point. Hurt feelings, death, the end of an era, you know, something that we've loved um, grief can accompany that. It, it may sound more, but it really is true, but we're willing to risk that, right? So there's that old quote, better to have loved and lost and never to have loved at all. So yes, um, you know, all these people that I wrote about and stuff, yes, they were worth loving. And, and the grief does come when, when we lose them. Quote from a, a friend um, who was applying for Operation Christmas Child. Here I put some different washies that I like um, and this one was a gift from my daughter recently I wanted to be sure to put that in there but just different um, quotes I'd come across and I wanted to separate them so I just chose some washi and it's a good way to use up washi I mean we love washi but if you're like me you have more than you can use so there we go and this is funny pain free this is the page I did when I Got some, uh, my tooth was really hurting. I had to get a, what do you call it, root canal. They gave me some drugs. I felt great. And I'm like, ah, pain-free. Well, they didn't tell me that once that wore off, there would still be pain in my tooth as it was recovering. So that was a bummer. But for a little while, I was very happy. Um, anyway, let's see. A little poem I wrote for my kids. Are we... We have a family chat, and um, everybody was doing funny little rhymes about the COVID virus. My daughter works at a hospital where she works with COVID patients, so we were all encouraging each other and making up funny poetry to, to lighten the mood. And so I wrote, being the mom, you know, I had to, like, bring it in, make it a little bit serious. So I wrote a poem for their, my hopes for their, prayer for their safety. Another Bible verse, some packaging. Thank you note, my daughter just got engaged, my middle daughter, and her boyfriend brought my husband and I some snacks and a gift card to thank us for letting him spend so much time here, which he's great. And anybody that brings me snacks, I love. No, I'm kidding, he's a wonderful guy. That is the end. So it's like I want to finish it, but I just... I just can't. So back up here real quick second. I did write, ended it with writing about my friend of whom I began the journal writing about. So I thought that was an apropos ending, starting and ending with her. Of course, I will continue to commemorate her and remember her um, in, in different things. But um, I felt like this book needed to stop. So, but I do need to add my aunt's, aunt's tab, aunt's tab, my aunt's <laughs> tab in the top, and then I'll be done. So, and I'll let my kids know. Find stuff about your relatives in this book. The relatives you never met that you might want to know about later. 
Okay, so there you go. There is a flip through of my moleskin expanded moleskin. Somebody tell me how you're supposed to pronounce it. Looks like moleskine, but I think I've heard it pronounced moleskin more often than not. So anyway, if that's incorrect, I would love to know the proper way to say it. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.